Yo, what's going on guys? It's the Kid Combinations out here today. Not out here, I'm on the internet. First time doing this. I'm doing a Skype interview with the homie Superfoo Star. Uh Superfoo Star, tell the people who you are and what you do. Okay, hi, I'm Super Foo Star. My actual name is Benjamin Ferris. I do illustrations. I'm working on an indie comic as of late. Um, I mainly do illustration work for the FGC and for some Twitch streamers that mainly focus on the fighting game community, which is what FGC stands for. And that's pretty much it. Nice, nice. Yeah, you want to tell the people how we met or should I tell them? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell them how we met. So here's how it happened. Uh, me and the homie Ryan Little uh, went to this video game tournament in North Carolina and Super Food Star had his own panel and I noticed he had some art from a video game that I used to play back in the day with my dad uh power stone for the dreamcast and it just brought back memories and i was like yo let me let me see what this guy is about and yeah followed him on instagram and we've been uh talking ever since so yeah <laughs> when'd you uh when'd you start doing art how did you get into it oh jeez, um i've been drawing since i was like two years old um, so it's been something I've been doing my entire life and I kind of knew I wanted to do it at a very very young age except I didn't know it was entirely possible till like six years old but I just assumed when I was really young like this has to be a thing yeah so I've been doing it for that long yeah. okay like what are some of your inspirations oh geez I would say like more on the broad side of things anime obviously I mean you can tell that in my style I really like pop art because the one thing I love about pop art the most is that even when it's bad, you still have to look at it because it's so <laughs> obnoxious, which is kind of like what I want in my work. So like when it's brilliant, it's like super brilliant pop art. And when it's bad, it's kind of bad, but you can still, it still captures your attention, which is the reason why I use a lot of bright colors. And then I would say um, like hip hop music and, and like the urban street culture scene and stuff like that, like graffiti, you know, things like that. I think those are my main three. And fighting games, obviously. Okay. Fighting games, yeah. What's your favorite game? Oh, see, I ask myself this question all the time. Because, <laughs> like, if I went based on, like, pure how much time I put into a game, it would be Smash Brothers. Oh, uh, word? But, yeah, but as of recent, I would say my favorite is Guilty Gear. Guilty I'm Gear. I'm just not as good at Guilty Gear as I am in Smash. So people people tend to like what they're good at, you know? So you're, you're good at Smash. I didn't know Smash was competitive fighting game until, like, maybe two years ago yeah it's very it's very bizarre isn't it yeah like people are really really good at it and they're still playing it to this day i don't think a lot of people know it, like smash is it's melee melee is the one that everybody's playing yeah i played smash 4 i mean melee just i don't know i like i like continuing on with the series the way it was kind of intended um melee is a brilliant game don't get me wrong but i prefer to you know start with something fresh and something new with everyone Cause it's hard to get into a game that people have been playing for 15 plus years and you're just going in day one like all right let's go like <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna get swept for like 10 years straight like it's just gonna happen you want to talk about the comic or like is that low key um i'll talk a little bit about it i mean i've been working on the same comic for like a year and a half now i've been doing like panels rough drafts you know i've, I've done two full chapters but i kind of scrapped them to restart because it was kind of an on and off thing. And recently I've been taking it more seriously. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> like no details about like what the comic's about or any of that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you some stuff. I just haven't told a lot of people yet, but um, basically this series is called K.O. Cretan, which is the name of the title. And the small synopsis of it, basically it's about a girl that can eat anything and then gets abilities based on whatever she eats. Hey. And she can even eat like inanimate objects. She can eat people. She can eat clouds. She can eat apples. You know, it can be literally anything. Wow. Uh, she never knows what she's gonna get, so she's she's gambling like crazy. That's dope, man. Yo, what are some uh, cool things that you got coming with your art this year? So I've been in a weird place with my art recently because I was doing a lot of fighting game fan art. Um, because one, my love for it, as well as it was an alternative to doing regular conventions. And I'm more passionate, I would say, about fighting games than I was about the current shows that really were taking over in the Comic-Con scene. 
Um, so I took that route and I really, really enjoyed it and I loved it, but it was supposed to be more of like a thing on the side while I work on my comic book, but then it became like my thing and the thing that I was known for. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm extremely blessed to even have my artwork noticed by anyone, but I want to work on, you know, more um, solo creative projects. So this year, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, working on my comic book. I'm going to be doing the first chapter and I'm going to bundle it with a one shot that I'm working on. Um, that's all basically food themed. I I don't know why I do this, but like everything now that I make is food related. <laughs> and it's not and it's crazy because it's like completely organic. Like it's not even me fully noticing until my friend pointed out. And I was like, you know what? I guess I'll just keep going with this because everything I think about is like <laughs> food related. So but um, yeah, I'm going to be making that into um, a little booklet. And then I'm going to be going around to conventions and kind of showing people that as well as my you know, fan arts as well, original prints and stuff like that. But I really want to focus on a lot of original projects. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Did you guys see that? Oh my goodness! How did you get the name Super Foo Star? How did you come upon that? Okay, so my original name was actually Ben Inc. But then when I had Ben Inc. on there, I was like on the 26th page of Google or something like that. I don't remember the exact one, but it was just way too far down. So I was like, I got to come up with something that kind of sounds like it makes no sense, that there's like no way in hell anyone has it. So I was thinking back and I'm like, how far back can I go with like my art memories? Like, so I was thinking, I'm like, okay, well, what's the first art piece that ever actually impacted me in like any way, shape or form? And um, I remember actually going to this Chinese restaurant with my dad and my grandma. And at the entrance, there was this big ass freaking Chinese line. Like it was, it was massive. Now granted, I was like two foot nothing because you know, I was like two, two years old, two or three years old. I was really, really short. So when I was looking at the Chinese line, I'm seeing it from the bottom. And if you've never seen a Chinese line from the bottom, they actually have like a, like bug eyes like super circular, like wide, like almost cracked out eyes. But from the top, they just look upset because their eyebrows are like really low. <laughs> so to every adult, it just looks like, oh, it's an angry lion. But to a kid, it's like a savage beast. That's like, it will go crazy any second. So it terrified me, but it was very, very uh, profound at the same time because I thought it was beautiful at the same time. Um, so just the artistry of it. And even when I was little, like I recognized the, like, the fact that someone made that mainly because my dad like he's a big artist fan in general yeah. and so he would point things out all the time like sculptures and statues and stuff so i knew it was man-made and it was just incredible to me that someone could make that out of a rock and then just the concept of it was just incredible and the sense of energy and presence that it had despite it not being a real thing was like out of this world especially to like a little kid who has a crazy imagination you know because you're more open to that kind of thing as a kid because you don't have like the pressures of like society and just living and, and that maturity in you, um, which can be a pro in that kind of situation. So and I've never forgot it to this day. Like I remember like it was yesterday. So that's where the food part comes in my name. Um, it stands for food dog, which is the actually the uh, American interpretation of the lion is called a food dog, even though it's a Chinese lion. Gotcha. Um, and then the super and the star just comes to are from my love of like a lot of um, superheroes, but like cheesy video game superhero esque kind of characters like Captain Commander and like Captain Falcon. Like I just love that level where they ride like they're so kind of cheesy that they're badass at the same time. Yeah, there's like a level of hype there that I've always loved. Like Cyclops has that, and they just become like the favorite, like the fan favorite of like any game just because they're they're like. They're kind of ridiculous, but also super badass at the same time. So I kind of wanted to add that element to my name. So I added the super and then the star. What's the end goal for you? The end goal for me, honestly, is having my own um, sort of my own brand as well as my own comic books. Um, just in general, my, my goal is literally just to make comics and tell stories. Like the monetary value of it is kind of like, not necessarily that it's whatever, but if I just like lived in an apartment and had a ham and cheese sandwich and I got to make comics all day, like I'm fine. You like good? I'm told, totally, yeah, I'm totally good. I'm not, I'm not one to chase money, but I do want to make comics for the rest of my life, like easily. Just cause I love the aspect of being able to create something that's fully your own 
um, and a whole world around it. And comic books is one of the very few mediums that allows you to do that while also having um, a lot of time in your hands to expand on that. Because if you try to make your own video game by yourself, that takes so long, yeah. so long. And with movies, you need a team. A lot of these things, you, animation, you need a team. So comic books is one of the very few where it can be 100% independent. And you're not going to go crazy from how long it takes, obviously, depending on the comic. But it doesn't take nearly as long as like making a video game by yourself or something like that. It takes a while, but not not that much. Um, but yeah, I pretty much just wanted to do that and hopefully get known for my characters and my character designs. And wherever that expands to, whether someone likes my comic and wants me to draw character designs for a game or something like that, an indie game, even a fighting game would be awesome. Like what advice would you give them for other artists like pursuing their dreams? Okay, I would say on the technical, non-emotional side, I would say find a community, get involved in it, and always focus on giving your art in the beginning. Because when you give your art to people and your art is of quality or something that they view as very valuable, um, those people are very thankful and they're more likely to call you in the future. Um, and I think that when you give a lot just in general, in life or even with your art, it does come back to you, but never expect it to in general. Because at the end of the day, it's like the fact that someone is using your artwork and just overall is a blessing. Yeah. So it's it's something that I think a lot of artists, they feel, especially um, a lot of teachers, they tell you to you know, sell your artwork, which is totally, completely true. And I think that when you get to a certain level, you have to switch on that mode where it's like, okay, now a lot of people want my art. Now I can raise up the prices, you know, but I think at the beginning you have to remain extremely humble and um, kind of be a make art with a sense of purpose, like make art for a community where it's going to drive um, their goal or your goal in a certain direction. Don't just give your art freely like, hey, draw a picture of me. Adrian. That doesn't get you anywhere. I would say really give your art to a cause and then the people in that cause will follow you. And then want to support you with the things that you personally want to do. And then after that, just, you know, work on the stuff that you truly do want to do on your own. And um, hopefully people will like it or not. And just just do what you got to do. I mean, I think art in general is like the whole goal is to truly, freely express yourself as much as you can. So I'm guessing video games is like what you're doing most of the time when you're not creating art. You know, I would love to think that, but as of recently, I've been reading a lot of manga and just studying. So like if I'm not drawing, I'm just studying like different story uh, strategies and stuff like that. And this is like different ways of approaching characters and studying character design. I mean, when I was younger, I legit watched a movie for a straight year just studying. <laughs> watched a movie? What? Yeah, I watched a single movie for a straight year, and I just just like just, every day, every day. Yeah, I fell asleep to it. I woke up to it. Like which movie? Spirited Away. Spirited Away. Oh, that was a pretty good movie. I only saw it a couple of times, maybe like two, three times with my girl. Um, but dang, bro, like you were really like really dedicated. Oh yeah, no, I this is I got no backup plan. <laughs> <laughs> Me either, man. Like this is this is what it is. Like, this exactly. is what I want to do. Like, you got to succeed at your plan A. Exactly. Like, honestly, a plan B just distracts from plan A. Yeah. That's this, how I feel about it. This is what you were born to do. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it since I was very small. And I had a lot of uh, school problems, which I think really kind of lit a fire under my ass when it came to art. Because, I don't know, for, for me personally, like, I went to a school system that was very discouraging. And so like, if you try to achieve a higher grade, they would let the teachers would actually make fun of you for being bad. And you're uh -huh. in like sixth grade. Like now I can deal with that. Cause I'm like, this person's like a dumbass. But when I'm a kid, you know, they kind of almost are like a mirror and whatever they tell you is what you think you are. And if you allow people to paint who you are as a person, they're going to paint a monster because they, there's no repercussions for them. There's only repercussions for you. And they kind of use my naivety in life against me in that sense. But the way that I kind of dealt with it was like, you know, what, if you're not going to teach me anything, then I have to make myself valuable. So what I did was I just stood in the back of the class and I would just draw my teacher or like, <laughs> you know, 
I would just practice anatomy and like, you know, character design and stuff like that. And I was like, listen, like I'm going to do art because like that actually gives me worth because I'm going to well, be able to create like a style or, or something along those lines that you can only get from me.